You know, I see a few people bring up, yeah, Tony wasn't a good boss. Well, hold on a second. What do you mean by not a good boss? There's a lot of people that work for AEW that think he's a great boss because he's a really nice guy and he tries to go out of his way to make life great for the people that works for him. However, this is the point. And I've had people there bring this exact thing up to me. Because Tony is such a nice guy and he wants to just be nice to everybody, what happens is it brings out the worst in everybody. And if you look at certain people, I won't mention any names, that have that have had issues here or there in wrestling, well, what happens when they go to AEW? Those issues are amplified because they're taking advantage of the fact that he's a nice guy. Now, CM Punk talked about his side of the story with Hangman Page. Talked about his side of the story with Jack Perry. I'm sure in his mind... He believes that he was wronged in both of these situations. However, this is actually what he said. When the issue happened with Hangman Page, and he said that he and Hangman had agreed on a bunch of things to talk about, and Hangman went out there, and he not just didn't just talk about workers' rights, but he said everything, nothing Hangman said he claimed had been agreed upon beforehand and so everything that he was going to say he couldn't just say because it wouldn't make any sense based on what hangman said he said he couldn't even hear hangman so he had to try and listen to do their back and forth and he said that he was a professional because he did not double leg and kill hangman that's what he said he was a professional because he did not double leg him and kill him in the Jack Perry situation, Jack Perry said something that he didn't like. CM Punk said, I was a professional. I didn't hit him. I only choked him a little bit. That's what he said. Now, there were multiple witnesses to that, and none of the witnesses said there was a choke. They said it was more like a front face lock type deal. But the point is, whatever it was, it doesn't matter. So he guillotined him. He Let's said... Just, why don't you just say that? Okay. No, front they didn't even say guillotine. guillotine. They said it was like a front headlock oh, type God. deal. No, it doesn't matter. The point is, his so line God. was, I was a professional. I didn't hit him. I only choked him a little bit. Bro, if you have problems... With the way things are being run, do we have to always go to a 10? Did he also not say that... Do we have to escalate it all the way to 10? Hold on, hold on. In this, let's take this particular case. In this case, this is what he said. This does not seem to be contradicted anywhere. I I could be wrong. You tell me if my memory is, is not here. But Jungle Boy came up to him and said, well, do something about it, and got close to him. I'm sure Punk did not mind well, Actually, Mike, close this, to has him. Been, this has been, this has been, because... Now, from what side here? Because, again, we have two sides I'll tell you that can't what side. even agree what happened as far as these guys getting together physically. There, there was security camera footage of the incident, and they had a group of people looking at it, including Brian Danielson who is a friend of CM Punk, and Brian Danielson saw it, and his recommendation was, guy's got to be fired. That doesn't, that does not explain that, Brian. He, Punk did put his hands on Perry, but again, if Perry's coming to him and saying, you know, all right, what's up? You know, if you want to go, you want to make a move, do it. Okay, and Punk put his hands on him. That's why he was fired. That's how I took that. Doesn't mean that that conflict wasn't exactly the way that he said that it was. Well, there were multiple witnesses who did not see it exactly the way that CM Punk did. And, you know, he he you mentioned... Know, that's the problem with all of this. It's a lack of institutional control. And I'm... maybe that's changing with the people that are there, but that's what this is. And that's what it's been. It's been a lack of structure. You skipped over when it came to a lot of that story with Jack Perry about the fact that this is what Punk is claiming. Tony Schiavone came up to him 
who is a producer who has had a long time in this business and has done a lot, came up to Punk to ask him to intervene after Perry had not only, this is what Punk says now, cursed out Shivani, cursed out one of the producers, cursed out several people, including the doctor about it. Tony Khan is there. So then they come instead to Tony Khan to CM Punk because it's his show. He's got control of that show. Okay. So then he says it. Like, again, who told him to get the car? Who told him to get a rental instead of getting a wreck if this was going to be something they were going to do? It's like, this guy's got a show going on, has no idea what's taking place because nobody knows the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. How can you function this way? And this has been a common theme throughout this promotion and tony khan is a nice guy he seems to be a great guy but this all of this goes back to one person and there are no clean hands on both sides of these things no matter how much everybody wants to say it was the other side or that wasn't the story or i heard this it is such a joke it's an absolute joke so let's uh, do a couple of these text messages here because uh, there's a lot of them. If I could find the right button right here. <laughs> it's been a hey, listen, give me some time, brother. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Are you going to be okay while she's gone? Yeah. Do you know where everything is in that All house? right, this person here. <laughs> and this is a great question that I don't have an answer for. And it's actually it's another one of those things in the interview. Um, he says, what's Punk's play? By trying to insinuate his tricep injury happened in the backstage brawl and not the match. Pretty easily verified it happened during the match. He even looks at the injury and compares it to his good arm during the scrum. Just seems very petty at best. He didn't flat out say that the injury happened during the brawl and not the match. But uh, he was asked, like, did that happen during the brawl? And he just goes. And the fact of the matter is it happened during the match. I mean, it happened during the match. It could have been made worse during the brawl, surely. It's, it's possible it was made worse during the brawl, but, I mean, he, you know, talked to the referee during the match. You can see, like, all of this. He was there at the scrum. He was looking at his arm. He was hurting. I mean, I don't know why he's trying to insinuate that it happened during the brawl, but um, it didn't. So, I don't know. I can't answer that question for you. Any word on reaction for people inside AEW? Well, I mean, just disappointed. I mean, he painted AW as not a business, a clown show, an idiot running it, not making money. I mean, and the feeling there is you realize that everything was like on a great ascent until he showed up and everything was great with Punk for a while. But look at it now. Look at the decline after Brawl Out and everything that happened there. And all of the issues that happened when he came back. And, I mean, you know, the the whole idea that he was at that scrum, the famous scrum, where I would just like to note that the scrum began with him calling out Nick Houseman for being friends with Colt Cabana because he'd heard something which ended up being wrong. And then, yeah, I didn't even know this till yesterday. Somebody on the uh, the board actually went, in, went back and, and listened and everything. Punk came after me, he was angry that I had said that it was unprofessional for him to, uh, I don't even remember what it was, say, say something about a hangman, and, and he was all angry about that. And, you know, when he, when he brought it up, I was like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, what are you talking about? You either didn't listen or you got a clip sent to you out of context, which happens to me all the time. And then someone actually went back, and guess what? The person who actually made a comment about Punk being unprofessional was actually Vinny! I never even said anything! So, that was another one. He was very angry about something that he'd heard secondhand, or whatever, and he got really angry about it. And then, you know, he goes on and on about the whole Colt Cabana thing, which I've talked about a thousand times. I never heard anything from the Young Bucks about the Colt Cabana story. Nothing. And, you know, the funny thing was, and I still don't have an answer to this question, Okay. By the time everybody outside of AEW was discussing this, okay, everybody, everybody in AEW had heard this. Everybody. 
There was not, I, I could bet you there wasn't one person in AW who heard, hadn't heard the, uh, the story about CM Punk and Colt Cabana and everything involving that, okay? By the time it, a word was breathed about it on any shows, everybody in AEW knew about this. Why was CM Punk well, so insistent? Who, but hold on, but for those... Hold on, here's my question. I just got one was, question. Though. I just got one question. Why was CM Punk so insistent that it must have been the EVPs that told Dave and I? When everybody there knew that story. Everybody there was talking about it. Why did he presume it must have been them? Well, what is the story for those people who don't know specifically when it comes to that case? Well, what it was, and this was exactly how I reported. I never said it happened. I said the reason that people are upset in AEW is they believe that when CM Punk showed up, Colt Cabana ended up being fired, and then the Young Bucks got him rehired in Ring of Honor. That was the story. Everybody in AEW heard, heard the story. Everybody in AEW was talking about the story. Most everybody believed the story. I can't say everybody, but everybody had heard that before it was ever mentioned on anybody's podcast. But Punk, for whatever reason, presumed it must have been the Young Bucks that told Dave and I. I'll do exactly what Punk did on the show. But anyway, anyway, and, the, and the, was, the question was, was like, "What?" Cabana fired. The question was, uh, "What's the, um, what's the uh, internal?" What's your question? Was Was Cole Cabana fired? Was Cole Cabana reassigned? At, at 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 some point, like, where did that energy come from and build to a point where Hangman did that on national TV? That still is a question that lingers out there. Because Punk is saying unequivocally he did not try to get him fired and was not fired, but that feeling was there. Is it possible that that feeling just kept manifesting itself into the point well, where the people issue worked was, themselves into a tizzy about The it? issue was everybody was talking about it, and the locker room was very much divided, and Tony Khan should have, forget whatever you said publicly, he should have called a meeting with the locker room and told them whether it happened or not. Bingo, and he goes and he back did to not. Tony Khan because it goes back to Tony Khan because if you're bringing in CM Punk and you feel as though he can't work with Cabana, so you're now going to move Cabana over here. Like, have enough balls and enough manhood to come up and say, "I made this decision for this reason because I believe he can make us bank, do TV ratings, whatever it is." That never happened, and then we get this stuff where people get gassed up in their own heads start bitching to each other, then start feeding stuff out there. Both sides of it do, and we end up with stuff like this, where we talk about AEW and everything that happens outside of the ring when we shouldn't be talking about what goes in on in the ring. And that's been multiple times, whether it be MJF trying to do his work and all that nonsense, any of this stuff. It's, again, yeah, hopefully with this new structure, it is fixed, but it goes back every time to one guy, one guy. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. 
thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, tens of thousands of hours of audio, all for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.